Hi guys, we completely forgot to film an intro for this video, so you have my awkward voiceover for company. And this week, we pick you up right at the Syria border. We speak to some locals who are not very happy. But you take some news, we can't uh, talk about. And we tell you about our travel plans because they've changed again. We're now turning around and heading back west again on the slow journey home. We are currently in Nusabayan. Nusabayan, which is basically a town which on this side is Turkey, there's a wall, and then on that side is Syria. And we're just driving around. The guy at the petrol station we just stopped at told us there's a nice church here, so we've driven in. And yeah, it's taken us right into this park, which is right on the wall, where there's like a military checkpoint and everything. So, a little bit nervous having the camera out, but we just thought we would show you a tiny snippet. Time to put it down. Yeah. Okay, now that's the border wall. Got checkpoints. It's like 340 it. Yeah, there's like fence, fence, stone wall, loads of stuff at the middle I can't see. Another stone wall on the Syrian side. Oh. This road could do with some improvement as well. Yeah, this road feels like it's in no man's land, yeah. like no one owns it. <laughs> I mean, this is absolutely insane. We never thought we would be this close. But this D road, which runs like the whole length across Turkey, literally just tips right next to the border for quite a long stretch, I think. Yeah, well, we're on this road for 15 miles now. 15 miles, so we're gonna be driving along this border. So, very, very cool. What an adventure this is, like. Local kids to the rescue. Go on, cow. Move out of the way. kisses and saying kuli kuli bye bye <sighs> well they were a little rougher with that cow than i would have liked i'm not gonna not gonna lie about it but you know it did the job better than your attempt <laughs> <just> going... <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to get too close why is it buckarooed or something buckarooed it's not both <laughs> all right and welcome to the town of Hassan Ki. It looks a bit like a building site right now and that's because the town is actually underwater. This town sits alongside the Tigris River which is what actually used to feed the Garden of Eden in the history books apparently. A dam was built and the town was completely flooded and they started to rebuild up on top of the hill here. And yeah, it's definitely still in the construction stages but what's really interesting is that they've actually moved loads of the historical monuments and placed them in a new location on top of the hill. It's actually really cool to be here when there's all this like heavy machinery going around and like loads of land being moved because we're seeing this place and it's like it's real infancy, like it's 
Oh, this is a really wanky one. It's rebirth. <laughs> Ooh, yeah! <laughs> now, it is my understanding that around 80,000 people lived in the town, the original town that's now under the water. And they've all been kind of moved, displaced, whichever word you want to use, up into kind of this new build grid system development on top of the hill. And when we arrived, it was really strange to see because Turkey traditionally in villages and towns is very higgledy-piggledy, um, very authentic. Uh, but here, it's kind of more like a Western resort, like little bungalows, very neatly in a line. So it feels very strange. Um, but this part behind me is obviously a lot more of the monuments and they are turning it into a massive green space and park that everyone can come and explore and still enjoy the history. So it's really nice that they didn't lose all of that uh, before the flood happened. And you can see behind me here, there is the new bridge that they have built. There was actually a huge bridge that spanned across to the other side of the river and that even got flooded. So that whole bridge now is underwater, which is insane. I think maybe like 490 meters of water, it rose up that far. And I think I actually read that there were a lot of international objections from a lot of archaeologists and a lot of other countries to say that this project shouldn't go ahead, but it did anyway. It was at this point that we met Ahmed, a local tour guide who was born and grew up in the old town before it was flooded. He and his friends shared their knowledge of their home and its rich history with us, but were very careful not to say too much. So how did you feel when they said the town would be flooded? What? Now yeah, we can say uh, many, things, many things, but if you take some movies, we can't uh, talk about. So everything's politics, you know. Yeah, everything is uh, politics. Yeah. More than 20 years we did we didn't see blue. So I'm 30. I'm 31 years old. Before 20 years ago, when we looking the river, mm -hmm. we see all the fish. Wow. Yes. Now. Now it's dirty. Yes. After land water is come, like Turkish coffee. <laughs> Oh, wow. If you need some information about Don, you can contact with me. I can help you. Thank you I very much. Well there. Yes. Perfect. You have been fantastic. Thank you, sir. Nice to meet you. Yes. Have a nice time. Have nice a nice trip for you. you. Thank Goodbye. you. Well, that was lovely. We did not intend to set out to buy a rug today, but now we have a traditional Kurdish rug in the van to remind us of our time here. It's nice to support the uh, local shops. They are. They said there was at least eight. Also, uh, traditional rug makers in the old town. And now this is the only one left because they haven't had tourists in such a long time. And people just aren't here to invest in the traditional methods of creating rugs That's and it. stuff Everything anymore. comes from China, so. Yeah, so we can help out. To us is not a lot of money, but to them it is. Yeah. So it's nice to have a little piece to take away with us, even if we didn't set out to buy a rug today. And even if we felt a little bit guilted <laughs> into it, but you know. <laughs> That comes with travel. It's yeah. just part of life, so... It is, it is. Yeah. Uh, and Ahmed has been amazing, teaching us so much about his local town, and they are so passionate about their history here. Yeah. But he was obviously not very comfortable talking about uh, the whole project and moving. Uh, they, he said it was a political issue, yeah. and it's not something that they talk about whether they were happy to move I away from that old town. So I'm going to take that as a no, they weren't particularly happy about it. Yeah, I think it. he couldn't say anything, but I think we can read between the lines and say that it's probably not a popular decision in the town. Yeah. Because um, their whole heritage has been lost to the water. So mm -hmm. I know they've moved their big historical monuments, but... It's as, not the same. As, as we saw with the shop or the, the, the building, like historical monuments are one thing, but a people is the stuff as well. And it's the the old gas lights that they used to use in the caves like mm. that's a very different part of history that's now kind of lost so yeah it's a real sad story but we're glad that we've been able to come and see it whilst it's kind of in production again <laughs> and you know maybe we'll be back one day and it'll be this beautiful green space that we can enjoy and we hope that any of you watching this that do come to Turkey, please do stop off in Hassan Kif. Maybe uh, message Ahmed, we'll leave his info in the description because yeah. he is a great tour guide. He can take you across the water, show you all the caves and the castle on the other side. And he can also take you further afield in the region as well. So yeah. he's a great guy. Yeah. And yeah, we now need to hit the road.
is where we have ended up for today. It was only about an hour and a half's drive in the direction of Lake Van, which is our destination for hopefully tomorrow. But we are in rural Turkey right now. And actually between anything that we've got on the map pinned as a want to go, like everything is so far apart. So even from where we were in Hassan Kif, like Van Lake is like a three hour drive. Then the next thing might be another three hour drive. So you know that there's only really tiny villages in between. So this is where we've ended up. It is not a bad spot, I have to say, next to a river. Excuse me, Mr. Fly. Uh, and we are just chilling out this afternoon. We have completely just gone into holiday mode because we're off work this week. And yeah, it's just nice to just relax, listen to the water. The clouds have kind of rolled in now, but we have had a beautiful sunny day today. And we've just been chilling and enjoying the peacefulness. Well, we've made it to Tatfan, um, and it's like any other Turkish town. Um, very hazy. There's a lot of haze in the air today, whether it's like dust from the wind that's been blowing the last couple of days or something more human made, I'm not sure. Um, but that was a weird drive, like dirt track towns followed by purpose-built university almost cities like just in the middle of the mountains it's very bizarre it's very turkish um no rhyme or reason but it's all there so we're going to stock up the food now and hopefully try and find some water because we are out we have just stopped at the side of the road to fill up at a tap outside a market and the lovely people that work here have invited us to sit down and take a rest. Yeah. <laughs> We're having photos and just generally chatting on Google whilst the tanks fill up. But slowly. Slowly. <laughs> that just shows well, the kindness of Turkish people because they will always invite you to have a seat and relax with them. Hey. Sorted. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, teşekkürler. 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 Görüşürüz. Yay! That was lovely, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Very nice of them just to invite us over whilst we're doing the little water fill up and to tell us where we can buy beer. Yeah. <laughs> Such a shame, isn't it? doing i know that some of it can't be helped and things and like it'll get blown here but there's a lot of rubbish just at such a nice beauty spot i mean that has definitely not just blown here yeah i think one of the things that we've seen quite a few times on the road is that like down country lanes and stuff someone will just dump a load of rubbish like rubble um some of it gets burnt some of it doesn't and I mean, every country has problems with it. Like, I'm not just singling out Turkey, it's just because we're here now, but it's such a such a shame and it, it gives a reputation that I don't think the country will want, so... But I don't know how you stop it. I also don't know, really understand why there's so much rubbish, because, like, it's not as though bins are a problem. There's bins everywhere. And they're emptied like multiple times a day from our experience when we've parked near them. There's always a bin man coming around like late at night, early in the morning. So it's not as though they don't have that kind of process in place. But who knows? Maybe it's just a culture thing. Where you just always have dumped rubbish. So it continues. <laughs> I know. This is mental. I, I know we've shown you these before, but like, I'm sitting here playing my Switch, having a bit of a chill time, and then just like, boop, 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 walking along from their little greys. That's lovely. This is part of van life for us, is just seeing these bits that you don't usually see. So, oh, thanks, Turkey. Rita's made some new friends. Merci. 
So these lovely guys just walked past the van like an hour ago and then on their way back we could see them kind of lingering outside so we opened the door and said hello and now we're all getting selfies. Come to Turkey, okay? Come to Turkey. So yeah, it's been very nice to meet them. They seem to think you look like Messi, the footballer, right? I mean, that's a compliment. I'll take that. I think it's the beard they keep saying. But... I think so. Hey. I've done all right then, I've done. <laughs> See you. Bye bye. <laughs> Everybody always wants to meet the English couple. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely lovely, don't get me wrong. Like, I've never felt like that before. I felt like a little bit of a celebrity getting my photo taken with the lads. <laughs> lads, lads, lads. Good morning, guys. I just wanted to pick the camera up and have a good chat with you this morning. In all honesty, so far in the east of Turkey, it's been a lot of plains and nondescript landscapes, which is nice to start with, but after a while we're kind of like, hmm. we've been spoiled, let's be honest. We've been spoiled by the whole coast of Turkey, the west side of it. And we've kind of been heading without a plan. And when we looked at Google Maps, there wasn't that much we actually had pinned up until the point of Georgia. So we, we got thinking and essentially what we wanted to do was change our plans again. So our plan now is to head back west and see some absolutely beautiful things on the way because we are not bored of Turkey. I don't want you to think that. Turkey has been the best country we've been to so far, but we just wanted to feel inspired again. It definitely feels weird to admit some of that, that we have kind of hit our most easterly point now in Turkey because it's been a mission for so long, like five months of heading east and now we've actually made it and it feels a bit surreal. And yeah, like Meek said, we're now turning around and heading back west again on the slow journey home, which is kind of crazy.